We've got this pile of electronics here, and if any of these items here are something that you would like to add or have on your boat, then this is the video for you. You should also be aware that if you would like to learn step by step how to install and wire any and all of these items as well as the entire boat, then you can learn exactly how by joining our boating academy at bornagainboating.com where we have over a hundred video courses teaching you just that. The best way to rewire a boat is to start with a blank canvas. That means you've got to pull every single thing that is in the boat out of the boat but it's crucial that you don't forget to also run pull strings through all of the rigging tubes when you do so, as well as anywhere you are going to need to pull a wire to, like up here in the front of the bow or over to the gunnels of the boat. When it comes to this kind of project as well, based on your budget and the quality of the stuff that's already in the boat, you might find that a lot of the stuff you pull out might be worth cleaning up and saving to lessen the financial blow of this ordeal. Things like ground bus bars and fuse panels though are usually pretty cheap, so saving those might not make it on your valuable assets list. Whereas trim tab controllers or certain pumps might be worth holding on to. Once you've got everything out of the boat though, it's the best time to give all the services a good clean so that we can sit down and visualize or plan and map out where we are going to mount all of the electronics. If you plan on adding a ton of stuff to the boat though, it's not uncommon to find that there isn't enough mounting surface area to mount all of the components you want to add. Not to mention that the fiberglass in many locations is going to be too thin to put a screw into that will last any amount of time without pulling out and just chipping the glass out, which is where PVC board and starboard comes into play. It's a great item to have around that you can make a backing plate or a mounting board out of so that you can install all your stuff to the board and make it all look pretty, without having to put through bolts with finishing washers on the outside of the console where you will have to look at them. Which is kind of what you have to do to cover up old bolt holes though, unless you want to sand, glass, and refinish the surface, which is an entirely separate project. These mounting plates are super useful for all kinds of stuff. Most of the time you'll have to use something like this when adding in amplifiers for a stereo, hubs for autopilots, even for things like autopilot pumps themselves or power steering pumps. Getting your components laid out and mounted is pretty much the backbone of making an electrical rewire in a boat look good because you need to know where the batteries go, the battery switch, and the ground bars and fuse blocks are going to go. Otherwise, you won't know how long to make your cables or where to cut your wires in order to let them all run smoothly, as well as have enough length to route them around to ensure that they get properly strapped into place to avoid bouncing around when you're out using the boat. For this boat, we had to go ahead and install the speakers into place before making the starboard plate because the same concept comes into play with the speakers. They will need enough material to bite into in order to be properly secured into place. Once you've got all the components mounted though, the next step would be to get all of the items put into place where you want them to go, which includes all the items that go into the dash, your GPS unit, the stereo, the gauges, and your VHF radio. I like to go ahead and install all the items at this point in time too. This includes pretty much everything else. The lights that go on the T-top, the underwater lights, your transducer, the VHF radio antenna, any other light that you will want to go on the boat like gunnel lights, console lights, and your navigation and anchor lights, as well as all the pumps like your washdown pumps and bilge pumps. It's nice to get all the items mounted and into place before you move into the wiring section. And depending on the boat application and the switches, I also like to use these bus bars to tie in the switches to the components wiring. Whether you are using a fuse panel or you have breakers mounted into the dash, these bars make a nice spot to tie everything together. This way you can make up your switch panel when it's not in the boat, but we'll get to the switches in a minute. Once you get all your components installed into the boat though, it's time to move into the wiring portion and getting all of the wiring ran to all the items that you just put in. When talking about wiring, we're talking about every single wire. Your antenna wires, your NEMA 2000 wiring, speaker wires, transducer wires, and all the cabling that goes up to your engine's gauges and your electronics. But as long as you did your prep work like we talked about earlier in planning out where everything is going to go, then you shouldn't have any trouble here because you have everything laid out to make sure that your engine rigging, NEMA cables, and other wires are going to be long enough to reach all of your stuff wherever you put them. 
Sometimes you'll find that you need to get some extension cables though, for things like VHF antennas and stuff like that. For us, we put one of these Shakespeare antenna splitters in so that we can use the same antenna for the FM radio and the VHF radio. They're super useful when you've got limited space and don't want to have to install multiple antennas. For the wiring, it's best to run the wire up to the item and then back to your console. This way you don't cut anything short. Starting from the component and then ending here at your bus bars, fuse panel, or junction bus bars gives you the ability to make sure you cut the wire to leave you the link to get them strapped in properly. You'll also want to make sure you don't forget to take a sharpie and mark all of your wires as you pull them throughout the boat. I like to label them all individually as they get pulled so that there is a tag on each end telling exactly what and where that wire is going. Depending on the time that you have too, you could roll the ends of the sheathing if you use like a 14 2 gauge duplex wire and then trim it off to give it a nice clean roll at the end of the sheathing. Again, depending on how much time you want to spend and how clean you want the install to look. And then once you've got all the wires run throughout the boat, it's time to start the crimping process and putting all the ends and connectors onto the wires to hook them up. Of course, you'll want to use heat shrink connectors and not wire nuts or exposed electrical connectors, unless you are looking to have something else to do and figure out in the near future when it corrodes and causes you some trouble. Doing this type of project in sections like this will help you keep it all organized and help prevent missing wires and connections or crossing up your wiring going out to all the different components. So far, we've been through the demo stage and pulled everything out of the boat, cleaned the boat, planned out where we are going to put everything in the boat, and mounted all of our bus bars and fuse panels. Then we pulled all the wires into the boat and labeled each one of them. And finally, we put all the connections onto all the wires, hooking up all of our components. Which brings us to the fun part and putting in all of the switches and getting them all wired up. For this job, I always find that it's easier to go ahead and take the panel out of the boat in order to put all the switches in. With all the other parts in the boat, it's easier to take a piece of wire and measure out the length that you need to make. Then pull the panel out so that we can put it on the counter in the shop and you can use the wire that gives you your length to cut all the other wires and hook them up onto the switches. On this boat, this panel comes with all the labels actually etched into the piece, which is one of the more unfortunate things with these older kinds of boats because you can't change out the labels. And there's some things that we won't be using, like we don't have two bilge pumps in the boat and I'd rather have the nav light and the anchor light all on the same switch, but it's what we've got to work with. We also just added another pre-built six switch panel to this part of the dash as well, so that we can add all the new stuff to the boat like all of the lights and other things that we added. Then we also went ahead and put in a DC adapter port and a USB adapter port here underneath this switch panel as well. We had talked about just making a new piece here and having someone like BoatOutfitters.com make us a new custom panel, but we just didn't have the time to get into it and we wanted to get the project done. So that's why we went ahead with the old piece and the prefab switch panel here. As you can see though, it's much easier to just wire up this panel here in the shop. then take it out to the boat to install it as a solid unit. That's where that junction bar comes in super handy. If we didn't put in the junction bar like this, we'd only be able to wire up half the panel while it was outside of the boat, because we'd have the positive wires coming from the switches out to each individual component that would need to be added to the switches once it was installed into the boat. But since we used the junction bars, we could wire up the orange wire from our switches to the junction bars and the red positive wires that come from the fuse panel straight to the switch panel, making it a lot easier and quicker to put back into the boat. Which brings us to one of the last phases of this process, being the section where we have to go around and button everything up, making sure that everything is wired incorrectly, nothing is left unconnected, and hook up the batteries so that we can then test everything out. We'll turn on all of the lights, the pumps, the electronics, and make sure that everything turns on and has power. Then, as long as everything has power and is turning on, we can get into the beautification phase where we zip tie everything up and strap everything down. You just want to make sure that you don't zip tie all your wires up and then go to test things out, just to find out that you missed a ground wire somewhere and you've got to now tear all the ties out to figure out what wire didn't get hooked up. 
leaving us with pretty much the last thing to do here to call this project a completion being to tune everything out and set up all the electronics. It's pretty simple to install a stereo, put in the speakers, the amps, and wire it all up, but if you forgot to tune the amplifier, then you're leaving a ton of sound out of the system that you just put in. The same thing goes for setting up your VHF radio, like putting in your MMSI numbers once you get those, as well as testing the radio out to make sure that you're sending and receiving. Radio check, radio check, radio check. Which are all things that we show you how to do step by step in the Born Again Boating Academy. We walk you through the installation, the tuning, and setting up of all these items that you just saw. From the switches, the wiring, to each component, it's all available at bornagainboating.com. And for all the Technicians Tuesday crew members, you might be wondering why this video wasn't out at its normal time. That's because we are going to be playing around a little bit with the scheduling of the videos, which will allow us to do more and bigger projects like more restorations. So don't worry, the videos will keep coming and we'll be uploading them as we get them done.